Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to this special service of worship on Monday, Thursday. The word Monday comes from the Latin mandatum, which means command. It refers to the command that Jesus will give his disciples in the Gospel of John. I command you to love one another as I have loved you. Uh, it is my hope that uh, after this service, where you see at the very end, um, the stripping of the church is really the stripping of the pyramids. I didn't want y'all to be worried. It's what it refers to, stripping of the pyramids. And I would love for y'all to help us with that, taking those pyramids into the sacristy uh, as an act of devotion. But we will depart in the silence. And I uh, want you to know that uh, we will be having a Good Friday service. Uh, we'll be having a luncheon at 11.30 in the West Dining Room down uh, stairs in our uh, fellowship hall. And after the service, we'll be having our uh, Good Friday service in the chapel. And so you're invited to attend that as well. Let us prepare ourselves for the call to worship. Center ourselves and the one who loves us and knows us better than we know ourselves. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. On this day, Christ the Lamb of God gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. On this day, Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. On this day, Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us. On this day, Christ our God gave us this holy feast that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection and at the last day may reign with him in heaven. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment to love one another as he loved them. Write this commandment in our hearts. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all who gave his life and died for us yet is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
seated. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. And because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith, in penitence, let us confess our sins before God and to one another. Please pray with me. Eternal God, whose covenant with us is never broken, we confess that we fail to fulfill your will. Though you have bound yourself to us, we will not bind ourselves to you. In Jesus Christ, you speak freely, but we refuse your love and withhold ourselves from others. We do not love you fully or love one another as you command. In your mercy, forgive and cleanse us. Lead us once again to your table and unite us to Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which we grow in grace. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And may the mercy of God, who forgives you all of our sins, strengthen you all in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And since God has forgiven us, in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And also with you. The first reason reading from the Hebrew Bible this evening is from Exodus chapter 12. 1 to 14. The Passover meal in this passage from Exodus 12, 1 to 14, continues to this day as an important festival in the Jewish tradition. Just as the Passover story defined the core meanings of the ritual meal of Passover, so the story of Jesus, death and resurrection, defines the core meaning of the Lord's Supper. Hear these words. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. 
You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorsteps in the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be to God.
That was a beautiful car. I always love the Monday Thursday anthems that just speak to me about the sacredness of this night and the sacrifice of love, how far love will go. We have just heard about the instructions regarding how to celebrate the Passover. Paul will now tell the church how they are to celebrate the Lord's Supper. It seems that there were those in Corinth who thought the Lord's Supper was something akin to a, a Bacchanalian festival of eating and drinking to excess. And that's what they did. Some would even be inebriated. And then the poor didn't have hardly anything to eat. And they just watched those who were rich gorge themselves. And Paul says, this is not how we do things. Let me share with you that which has been handed down to me. And when Paul says it's been handed down to me, he's referring to the tradition that was handed down to him by the apostles. He's also referring to the revelation he received from Jesus the Christ. And so once again, we are, as a people of God who celebrate liberation from bondage on this holy night, these are the instructions of how we are to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Paul writes, For I have received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you, do, as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink from the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the end. This is the reading. This ends the reading of God's holy word. May he bless it for our purposes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. For you are our rock and our Redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We have come tonight to remember and to be remembered as the people of God delivered out of death into life. In this respect, it is only fitting that we should bracket Jesus' last meal with his disciples with instructions how to celebrate the Passover and the Lord's Supper found in the book of Exodus and in Paul's letter to the church at Corinth. Uh, the first thing I want you to notice is the context for both stories as we remember and are remembered as the people of God and our celebration of the Lord's Supper. In the book of Exodus, the immediate context is the 10th plague about to descend upon Pharaoh and all of Egypt. You recall that the 10th plague is the death of the firstborn. The angel of death will descend and kill every firstborn creature, human and animal, unless it sees the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of the house. If the angel of death sees such a sign, the angel of death will pass over that house. Thus it can be said that inhabitants of the house will pass from death into life, as you see from the slide. Uh, we know that Pharaoh will be heartbroken over the death of his firstborn and give his permission for Moses and the children of Israel to leave Egypt. But Pharaoh's grief will soon turn to anger and regret the decision he made and give the command to try it down and bring back his enslaved workforce so that his massive building projects like the pyramids could continue. Uh, this is why the children of Israel instructed to wear clothes for the journey ahead and eat in haste. In fact, verses 1 through 14 are instructions on how the present community of faith are to celebrate the Passover. 
The same might be said of our verses from 1 Corinthians. They too are instructions on how to celebrate a ritualized meal of liberation that involves sacrifice. A partaking of a meal that binds them in solidarity as the people of God who sojourn in this life till at last they sit at table with Christ until he comes again. Because the Christians at Corinth have turned the Lord's Supper into a meal that accentuates the differences in Roman society from the haves and the have-nots, going so far as eating and drinking in excess while other brothers and sisters in Christ have nothing to eat, no wonder Paul wants to set the record straight. He reminds the Corinthians of that which has been handed down from him, from the apostles and from Christ. They, these have become the words of institution on the night in which our Lord was betrayed, which calls to mind Jesus being betrayed by a kiss. What was supposed to be a kiss of friendship was a kiss of death. Jesus took a loaf of bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In each ritualized ceremony of liberation, those gather are to remember in such a way as to be remembered as the people of God who benefit from God's mighty act of deliverance and who participate in the ongoing drama of salvation, aptly illustrated by life defined by the empire or life defined by Israel's God. No doubt the sacrificial element in both rituals, the Passover and the Lord's Supper, have troubling aspects for modern people offended by the barbaric and primitive notion of sacrifice. Uh, does this not make God a God of violence, who sanctions violence to cleanse that which has been defiled? For instance, the atrocities that have been discovered in parts of Ukraine where the Russians have pulled out have been described by the president of Ukraine and the president of the United States as examples of ethnic cleansing. Consider this. If Pontius Pilate is not able to wash his hands of the blood of Jesus, what makes us think that the spilling of blood can have a cleansing a fact. I have no doubt that Jesus saw what was about to happen to him by the powers that be, religious and political, who had shared an interest in seeing him put to death, that his impending death could have a lasting effect if it was seen through the lens of Passover. The Gospel of John is right to see Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Does this mean that God sanctions violence? I say no in this respect. Jesus is the end of the sacrificial system, not its perpetration. In the Old Testament, human sacrifice was practiced by Israel's neighbors, but not by Israel. Then in the New Testament, Jesus is sacrificed because of sin, and only later did the tradition understand that he died for sin. What Jesus said from the cross, it is finished, it needs to be heard. The sacrificial system represented by the temple has come to an end. The God we worship does not delight in anyone's death, much less his own son. For example, a Jewish rabbi mentioned to me that the Midrash on the passage about the jubilant response of the Israelites and seeing the Egyptian army drowned in the Red Sea has Yahweh saying to the angels in heaven, Are you to sing while my children are destroyed? The rabbi went on to say that God will not tolerate the celebration of human suffering, no matter how deserving the sufferers. For this reason, at our Passover seders, we remove one drop of wine from our glass as we name the ten plagues. 
reducing our joy and acknowledgement that our freedom was won at the cost of great suffering to others. This recognition of God's concern for human life, even those we deem unworthy of life, have a place at the table. I say this because Jesus welcomed Judas at the table. In this respect, the scripture has come true. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of of my enemies. In a few hours, one would betray him, one would deny him, and all would desert him. This is who Jesus shared his last meal with. Therefore, it's understandable that he would use what little time he had left to communicate what the kingdom of God is all about. It's about breaking bread with outcasts and sinners. None of us are worthy to partake of this sacred meal tonight. It isn't about what we have done. It's about what Christ has done for us. Christ makes us worthy to be called his friends. No greater love than this when a man lays down his life for his friend. And I call you my friend. Lest we think that this is the last meal Jesus will ever have with those he calls a friend. There is a promise of future meals within the words of institution. The friends of Jesus are to celebrate this meal until he comes again, according to Paul, or until he breaks bread with them in the kingdom that is coming according to the Gospels. Either way, we see the promise comes to fulfillment whenever we remember and are remembered as the people of God delivered out of death into life who no longer live for self, but live for God in this life and in the next. Uh, we saw this in the action of Mother Teresa and her ministry to and with the dying, the untouchables of India. Uh, Michael Main writes in A Year Lost and Found, I should always remember visiting Mother Teresa's home for the dying in Calcutta and being shown round by the sister in charge, Sister Luke. The dying lie on thin palaces of straw. The men in one section of the extended war and the women and children in the other between two wards is a small cubicle with a plastic curtain drawn across the front of it. Just before I reached the home, an old woman had been brought in from the streets in filthy condition. She was barely recognizable as human. Come and see, said Sister Luke, and took me across the curtain off trial. She drew back the curtain. The trowel was filled with a few inches of water in which was lying the stick-like body of an old woman. Two missionaries of charity were gently washing her clean and comforting her at the same time. Above the trowel, stuck to the wall, was a simple notice containing four words. The body of Christ. It is an image I can never forget. Neither should we, as we gather to remember and be remembered as the body of Christ for the world. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our response is with an affirmation of faith. It is the Apostles' Creed. Please stand if you're able. 
and let us affirm what we believe as a body of believers. And all of God's people said, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
Scripture tells us that on that Easter morning, the women went to the tomb and found it empty. They returned to the disciples to tell them what they had seen and heard. But Peter was the only disciple that believed them. The text says, Peter got up and ran to the tomb. I love that detail. Sometimes that's how I come to the table. I can picture it. Can't you? Peter running to the garden. Peter with every step praying, let it be true, let it be true. Peter out of breath, desperately hoping that he will see Jesus again around every corner. Yes, that's sometimes the way I come to the table. Praying with every step, running to get here, desperate to feel something holy. Praying that I'll see Jesus around every corner. Other times, my spirit is still, and I find myself calmly and slowly returning to this table. So, no matter how you feel today, whether you're running to get here, whether you are desperate and hungry, for a spiritual experience, or whether you are unsure and moving slowly, know that there is room for you here. This is an expansive table. There is food for everyone. There is a seat for everyone. There is love for everyone. There is no scarcity here because it is God's table. And so everyone is welcome. And it's good enough news that you might even want to run. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. You bring forth bread from earth and you create the fruit of the vine. You made us in your image and freed us from the bonds of slavery and you claimed us as your people and made covenant to be our God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey. When we forget you, and our faith was weak, you spoke through the prophets, calling us to turn again to your ways. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the celestial crowds, choirs, and with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever say to the glory of your name, Holy, 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 holy Lord. Lord. God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, whom you sent to deliver us from the bondage of death and slavery to sin. and humility, he descends from your heights to kneel in obedience to love command. He who is boundless takes on the bondage of our sin. He who is free takes our place in death's prison. In the deserts of our wanderings, he sustains us, giving us his body as manna for our weariness. The cup of suffering which he drank has become for us the cup of salvation. In his death, he ransomed us from death's dominion. In his resurrection, he opened the way to eternal life. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. 
accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry of every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Lead us, O God, by the power of your Spirit to live as love commands. Bound to Christ, set us free for joyful obedience and glad service. If Jesus gave his life for ours, help us to live our lives for others with humility and persistent courage. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection, when with the redeemed of all the ages, we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be by thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night of his arrest, took bread and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Also on the same night, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink all of it. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat from this bread and drink from this cup, you do show forth my death until I come again. The gifts of God for the people of God, and our response is, thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. We will be celebrating communion by a modified form of intention. Uh, You'll be coming to either table on my right or the table on my left. Uh, You will be serving yourself, and Judy and I will be saying uh, the words of institution, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. And for those who are not able to come, just let us know and we will bring uh, the sacrament to you.
Let us pray. God of grace, your Son, Jesus Christ, left us this holy meal of bread and wine in which we share his body and blood. May we who have celebrated this sign of his great love show in our lives the fruits of his redemption. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the bulletin it says words of betrayal in some ways it's more fitting to say words of abandonment then Jesus said to them you will all become deserters because of me this night for it is written I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered Peter said to him Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. 